okay guys javascript is a huge world and react in reality is a very small puzzle piece in the broader picture of javascript so it makes sense that react would give us a function in the form of use effect that will allow us to work or quote unquote synchronize with things or systems that are outside of the world of react and 90 percent of the time when you're going to use use effect you're going to do so in api calls and you're going to do so when you are directly modifying the document object model now api calls just kind of make sense if you're making an api call obviously you're interacting with a system that's outside of react but what most people don't realize is that number one you can manipulate the actual document object model in react you're not supposed to but you definitely can and the document object model is outside of react so if you're going to actually manipulate it many times not always you're going to have to use use effect because it is outside of react it is an outside system but the biggest hurdle, the biggest catch to use effect is how you use it. And you need to be very cognizant of how you use use effect and how you actually set the settings as I call it. Now, in my example, there's three different ways that you can set the settings, quote unquote. The first way is a way that you never, I repeat, almost never ever want to use. And that is to use use effect directly as it is. I call that why mode. And I honestly question why the creators of React, as intelligent as they are, made it so that just using use effect the way that it is, is oftentimes 99% of the time the way that you do not want to use it. So do not use it this way. The second way, and probably the most common, is going to be the run once and forget it mode. And the run once and forget it mode basically means just put an empty array after the curly brace. And when you put an empty array after the curly brace, what's going to happen is the code that you have inside of use effect is going to run once and won't run anymore. Then you have what's called referential equality mode. And basically what use effect is, is going to do is it's going to check this value right here. And whenever the value or whenever the place in memory where this value changes, it's going to trigger use effect. The code inside use effect is going to run. So if this goes from a zero to a one, it is going to change. If this goes from a string to some other type of string, it is going to change. Or if it goes from an object dot name and changes, it's going to trigger a re-render. But you have to remember that this is referential equality and it needs to change the actual place in memory. Just mutating the actual value is not going to cut the mustard and you're going to have to make sure if you're using an object that that object changes place in memory. But let's go ahead and let's actually get started on our app because we've got a place in our app where we want to use use effect. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we actually want to create another API call because we're not gonna be just searching for companies and we want to actually create a detail page and see detailed information about particular companies. So we're going to create an API call that's going to allow us to get information about a particular company. And I'm just gonna call it get company profile, just like this. I'm gonna go async and I'm going to pass in a query and it's going to be a string as you guessed it. So go here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a try catch block and I'm going to just go out and get my data from an axios.get call. So, so uh, get, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring in the company profile. Since we are just getting one company profile, it's probably not a good idea to wrap it in data again, so, or wrap it and try to get the data property again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to bring in an array of company profiles, just like this. And I've already created the type for you, so if you want to check out the type, 
just go ahead and press the command if you're on a Mac or control click and you can go ahead and check out the type if you want to but I went ahead and made everything for you so the next thing that we need to do is we need to actually get the string for the API and I'm just gonna go ahead and type it out I'm feeling just a little crazy today I think I might just go ahead and type it out so financial modeling prep.com and we're going to say slash API slash v3 slash profile since we're just getting the actual profile data just like this we'll say uh, query so put a template literal in there we're going to pass in our query just like this go ahead here and then all that we need to do is pass in our api key and i did everything through env so i'm going to go into here say process dot env go down and then i'm going to say react app api key just like that and that'll do it so we've got our string ready next thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna return this data I'm gonna do a catch again and I am just going to return a console log for the first one uh, I kind of went all out there but I think I'm just going to go ahead and put a console log for the rest of them so we don't have to actually type narrow that string and I'm gonna say error message from API so go error message from API and go into here and put the API so I'll say error message so error dot message we can just go ahead and console log the error message to the screen okay so that looks good now what we need to do is we need to actually go into the company page and we need to fetch the data before the page loads. So in order to fe actually fetch the data before the page loads, the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to use uh, React Writer DOMs, use params, and we're going to pull our ticker out. So we're gonna go here. Uh, this is being passed in the form of the URL. So the slash HTTP. So if we go to HTTPS and we have our localhost right here, so we'll have localhost and this actual param is going to come from what's being passed in through the URL, like I said. So that's what use params is doing and it's utilized by React Router. So go into here, go ahead, bring this in through the quick fix. Now what we need to do is we need to actually set up our state. So I'm going to have a uh, company state right here. So we're just going to set the company going to bring in use state and the state that we are bringing in is going to be an array of or just the company profile not an array I'm sorry since we're just getting one company profile we don't actually need an array and I'm going to go ahead and bring that in okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to actually use the use effects so I'm going to go into here go down make sure we bring this in and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an async function called git profile init you could call this whatever you want to but I'm just going to call it init going to make it async of course and not going to pass in anything we're just going to go down right here we're going to uh, create another function it's going to have an await and we're going to say git company profile and this is actually the function that we just made so at, we'll go ahead and pass in our ticker and as you can see that this is pretty nifty we're passing in the ticker through the actual URL just like this and um, we can make this an optional right here or we could make it a non-null assertion really up to you whichever one that you want to do and I'm going to set the company within the actual async function so we'll say result make this an optional we'll say data zero that's going to go ahead and set it and then the key to async functions within use effect is you want to call them after so we'll say get profile init and also remember we don't want to activate death mode we want to go ahead and make sure that we we pass in our array right here now what I'm going to do is uh, put some placeholder right here so we can actually run it just in case and then I'm going to make a conditional render that is going to check if the value actually has value and if it does have value I'm going to pass in so let's say I'm just gonna do a div and I'm going to pass in the company and the company dot 
company name. We'll just you could pass in anything. We're just gonna test it to make sure make sure that works. And if it doesn't work, what we are going to say is uh, I don't know. We'll say company not found. So company not found, just like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run it. So I'm gonna go to sudo npm start. If you're on, if you're not on a Mac, you don't need to do that. Sudo is not something uh, that's for Macs. But I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna run it. Um, gonna go down. So we'll say Apple, and let's go ahead and click on it and see okay so i made a silly mistake i actually misspelled financial modeling prep i accidentally spelled it financial modeling prop so let's go ahead and i'm going to go back and see if i can't run it so we're going to go here going to go ahead and our api is working i did have that misspelling but it is working now anyways Hope that you guys enjoy this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.